So today I'm gonna play uh, four games, four game match against uh, international master from Romania, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I think I'm gonna challenge him just unrated because he doesn't have he doesn't have rating here. Yeah, <laughs> twenty one twenty one. I <laughs> I don't want to. To lose my rating to twenty one twenty one, yes. If this is, if this happen, so d four and um, oh, actually I lost two games to this guy. Let me check what what I played against him. This was I playing black. Uh huh. So this is something okay. And this was I playing white some stupid things so not really important so okay let's play knight f6 and d6 at least in the first game I don't know I don't know what he plays with white I mean I haven't checked his games according I even I haven't even checked his profile but according to his uh, Leech's account, his rating is around 2400. Yeah, so I mean, if he plays, uh, if he gonna play D4 both times, then for in next game with black, I'm gonna play uh, something else, something different. For example, Yanovsky variation of Queen's Gambit, uh, D5, E6, A6. Um, Hello Matus, hello Gucci Pigeon, hello TFS, greetings to Germany. And since uh, there is uh, like it's 12 plus 5, I have more time to explain you uh, a few things. So this is what I regularly play and use, you have seen that uh, many times. A sideline, um, which is, which is good for, um, which is good for Blitz, for Rapid. I even play this in classical games. And the position is immediately, immediately complicated. Yeah, I mean, if you know, like knowing here, let's say 10 moves theory, you already uh, like for sure know more than your opponent, yeah? I know in some lines, I know, let's say I know maybe 15 moves theory in some, In some lines of this system yes somewhere less somewhere more and seems like the guy also like didn't prepare for this much because knight d4 this is a typical cheap trick And you know the funny thing that actually I have uh, I have never checked what I really need to play after moves like um, queen a4 or queen d1. I mean the point is obvious. The queen is opposite to the king, and after e d4 he takes f3 check, and the bishop is attacking the queen. So easy win for black. And a few times I I, I got this. I've got this position several times in uh, in blitz, uh, online blitz. I don't remember if I got this uh, OTB, but at least online blitz many times. And I remember that I wanted to check what I should play against Queen A4 check, but I didn't do that. Uh, and this is a problem. Eh? So now I'm playing from scratch. So you see, knowing eight move theory was enough. I didn't do any preparation for this match. So 
So if I play bishop d7, then queen d1 attacking the knight on d4, and uh, later white can take on e4. So as far as I remember, it's still like knight c6 should be played. Uh, like uh, preparing for a rapid match that uh, like there is nothing I mean no money no nothing like makes no sense unless you want to let's say you ask somebody like for example you can play with your friend or anybody else uh, like to play a particular line then of course uh, it makes sense to prepare that line otherwise what i like about blitz and rapid uh, and uh, i'm gonna participate in the world rapid and blitz championships uh, just actually today is 25th of november 25th of november so like just one month left and uh, what is good however not about rapid not exactly it's a bit tricky uh, but what is good, you don't really need to prepare, so you don't, like in classical chess nowadays, it's, uh, and the older you become, it's more and more annoying, yeah, uh, to prepare, like wasting like two hours, spending two hours, uh, repeating everything, uh, thinking what to do. So nowadays, even in classical tournaments, it's a rare case when I do a serious preparation, like maybe, like, maybe 20 30 minutes i check the opponent's games and if i really need to repeat a line that i don't know then like i do that but otherwise i know my openings and uh, like i remember it was a story by not like a story but uh, aronian uh, like in one of his interviews he said that he doesn't prepare to like to the games to his games because um, like he, uh, or, uh, not exactly but almost doesn't prepare for the game because like he, he knows his opening so why to prepare yes <laughs> like you know your openings and then you don't care what your opponent uh, plays uh, Kirillux hello uh, mega hello yeah everything is fine queen b5 Queen b5. Boom, 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 boom. Well, I have a, I have an idea what to do, but not sure yet. So you see, this is funny, like, uh, and I, I even remember that in one of my, like, last uh, Blitz games where I trapped my opponent for this uh, thing, I I wanted, later I wanted to check what I need to do after Queen A4, and maybe I even checked, and probably I checked that I need to play Knight C6, but then I stopped. <laughs> and so, mm, okay, Queen B5, what do we have here? So the bishop is hanging, yes, that's the problem. What is funny is that, um, let's say, if I played a6 and no queen f5, but queen b7, then I play rook, ah, rook a7 anyway, queen escapes to b3. So what are my real options? Queen b5 shouldn't be good, but yeah, bishop d7 may be, but queen b7 and rook b8, and there is, unfortunately, there is queen c7 because queen a6 knight before that's fine bishop c8 obviously doesn't make any sense just knight e4 knight e4 knight e4 so this is stupid so i think i believe that my options are bishop d7 and queen d7 only these two moves i don't see 
I don't really see alternatives. If like I mean a6 queen f5, I can trap the queen there. So it should be either bishop d7 or queen d7. Queen d7 actually not bad. I mean the b7 pawn is poisoned. Uh, and I mean knight e4, then I take, knight e4, then I take, pawn takes, and he has double pawns. But bishop d7 seems to be more challenging uh, because I have an idea of playing knight d4 and knight c2. But the question is, the question is very concrete, bishop d7, queen b7, rook b8, since the rook is hanging, what else? Queen c7, and so what? Do I have anything there? I don't really see. Hmm. So you see, I will have to, I will have to check it later the line because it should be, it should be minus one for black. But I have no idea at the moment like what to do against queen b5. Hello, Z. Thank you. So queen d7 is a simple option, bishop d7, queen b7. Rook b8, queen c7. And the queen is almost trapped, but not really. Yeah? So that, and by the way, he will be a pawn up. That's why I'm not really sure what I need to do. That's why I'm just gonna play queen d7. Maybe queen d7 is a bit um, like you know. Maybe it's not so uh, not so good. But uh, I don't see what else I can do. And bishop goes to e6 or g4 let's go to e6 so of course white's pawn structure is terrible and uh, for him he it's queen b7 is i mean necessary to calculate but however uh queen b7 there is rook b8 queen a6 knight b4 maybe queen a7 by the way so maybe Queen b7 was a, a principal critical move. Um, castling long, I'm not sure, like, do I really want to do that? That's why I'm going to make a stupid move, but just rook b8, defending this pawn. And my idea is just to play bishop e7, castle. Of course, I would like to have my bishop here, but after knight d5, the f6 square is... Uh, um, yeah, maybe I can start with knight e5, by the way. It looks... It looks okay to start with knight e5. I mean, the endgame is quite uh, good for black. Knight e5 is not like a necessary move. I could have played bishop e7, then castle, just normal development. It's already like I am, uh, I am better in terms of strategy. So the point is, like slowly, slowly, not uh, giving like I shouldn't give him, um, let's say activity. So the pawn is hanging. I mean, I can take on c4, but he's gonna take on a7. And knight d5 is coming. So maybe knight d5 was not such a good idea. I hoped... I hope that he's not going to take to play queen a5. So... That's why... Maybe stupid knight c6, just like saying, okay, I'm I was kidding, don't don't take it too seriously. Because if I play a6, he's gonna play knight d5, I will be forced to play rook c8, wasting more and more time. 
However, if I play knight c6, then maybe queen g5. Yeah, so like here some problems, there some problems, like anyway, some problems. Okay, let's play a6 then. Alex GM, thank you. Yeah, somehow not happy. I'm not happy at all with what I did. Uh, 95 was, yeah, just as I said, it was unnecessary. Also, there is a problem that I can't really play c6 uh, because of... Ah, actually, I can. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Actually, I can, but... I can't. I can and I can't. I mean, c6, knight b6, then I can play queen c7, pin in the knight. But uh, also after c6, knight e7, queen e7, bishop e5, d5, queen e5. And uh, all, he also can take uh, knight e7, queen e7, bishop e5, d5, queen e5 right now. However, his pawn structure is still terrible, so I'm not, uh, at the very least, I'm not worse. But I don't really like w what I did. I don't like it at all. Here it was simple, like bishop e7, castle, and that's it. And have a good life. Enjoy your life. But what I did is, uh, yes, a bit stupid, a bit stupid. Uh, his like maybe one of his main ideas here would be bishop g4 so let's just play rook e8 anyway should be good uh, rook will press on the e4 e3 pawns Praj <laughs> uh, Boucher thank you uh, like I don't know like maybe uh, I mean do you ask do you mean the first course because uh, there is a second course yes if you I mean I don't know if you know how about queen a3 attacking the a2 pawn and also threatening bishop c4 using the using the pin Bishop takes d5 was an option, yes. Uh, like anyway, like you see, it, it would improve his pawn structure. Yes, but I have the second course already. Yes, yeah, and you are lucky today, like it's on sale as well as like both courses are on sale. So he played queen a1, of course, looks a bit passive, but uh, the reason is simple, yeah? Bishop c4 was annoying. And what do I do here? Maybe just rook d8. Yeah? If he plays rook d4, I'm gonna play c5, fighting for, like, rook d... Of course, not rook d4, allowing him e d4. So e5, e5, but no, 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 not so fast. I thought about queen c5, but there is queen c3. Maybe g6, g6. Uh, looks a bit weird why g6 but h6 you see it's always the bishop would uh, cover this uh, evacuation square for my king so uh, like it's not available anyway right this is the point maybe a5 a4 
this is of course still not really like um, let's say not really like a serious match it's like mainly let's say mainly it's about still about streaming since I mean that's why if I play this match let's say for really uh, let's say beating the guy or at least uh, like I'm, I mean of course uh, I'm playing like to beat the guy but Ah, this was his point about playing e5. But okay, a4. I'm don't. I don't care. After if he plays rook d1, I'm gonna just play rook a8. And uh, funny thing that the d file is not so important because there are no squares available for white's rooks. So now if he takes with his queen, I can I can take on b3 and then play in rook a8 and occupying the a file. Or I can uh, like maybe after queen b3. Actually, I can play rook a8. Yes, I can. I can. And still rook a8. However, maybe queen c5, but queen e4 then. Yeah. Okay, let's play rook a8. I mean, I explain in a lot and uh, wasting too much time. Um, if I really, if I really needed play for a result yeah bishop g4 allowing him maybe later rook d7 is coming that's a bit dangerous uh, however i can take then i can take on e5 rook d7 rook e7 yeah that looks fine so now you see look at his pawn structure oh ugly and look at my pawn structure oh beautiful so maybe I'm not sure if I'm gonna if I really gonna take the pawn. I mean, especially after rook d7, white should play rook d7, I believe. Otherwise, it just uh, pretty bad. Actually, yeah, rook d7 doesn't help him. Rook d7, rook e7, queen d5, rook d7, queen d7, and queen e7 in the end. Of course, uh, the only advantage for white is um, that uh, he... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, I play this rook. The only advantage for white that there are no minor pieces. Yeah, for example, if I had an... Okay, if, <laughs> actually, if white had a knight on d5, it would be also be like quite bad for me but i mean in terms of pawn structure for example rook and games white can survive so now if queen d5 then just c6 kicking the queen away maybe still this is something he needs to do i guess So if you have a if you have problems with pawn structure, then of course, um, how about queen c1? Okay, let's just check where he's going to move his king to. I don't think I'm gonna really take the e3 pawn because of maybe queen d7. Yeah, then it was better to give a check from a1 and having an option of playing. Yeah, let's play c6, just covering the d5 square. Maybe now rook e3 is a real threat. Maybe it was actually a threat. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, I, I don't think I could have taken the pawn on e3. So my only mission now is not to give him, like, uh, for example, if... Uh, even if we imagine um, rook endgame, then uh, it's pretty bad for white, yeah? His pawn structure is bad. Um, actually, even his king is worse, right? Uh -huh, queen d4, so I cannot take on e3 because of rook f7. So what can I do with my queen? Queen, come on, make some, make some fun. Maybe it was not a good idea to put the queen on c1. If I play queen e1 now, there is g5 covering the h4 square. 
So how do I, what do I do here? Actually not so clear. Maybe queen a3 attacking here. I want to play like this. Um, I want to play queen a5. His idea, rook h4, rook h3. This is something not uh, like, not to give him to do. <clears throat> so I need to be careful now, not blundering that, uh, not not like, not, not really not blundering, but just not uh, giving him such a chance. Yes, he's blocking my queen, but I can play queen c7, pinning his rook, and uh, the idea is to play queen e5. Actually, I can't play queen e5 at the moment because my f7 pawn will be hanging. But maybe I can play rook, what I can really play, rook d7 or rook d8. Uh, the real champ, uh, like, Please uh, ask your question a bit later, maybe better in the beginning of the next game. So which rook, d7 or e8? I feel like d7 rook is better. I mean to... Wow. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> What's that? Can I just take on like here? For example, maybe even rook d2 now. Rook e7 is enough. He's like this weakness, this weakness. But let's play more, more interesting, more aggressively. Now queen d7 giving him a check. So his queen is almost checkmated. And now just a stupid simple move like rook d5. Queen c7, then queen f4. So well, let's play rook d5, just taking this pawn or this pawn. Queen b8, I don't think it's I don't think it's anything dangerous. Maybe queen e7 makes sense. But queen e7 may be queen f6. Let's take. And now it's time to play what? To play queen e7 maybe. If queen f6, if queen f6, then I'm just gonna take it. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm just gonna play rook e5. Uh, rook e5, rook d. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I'm just gonna take it. And my point to play h6 and g5. And now g5, and you see my king can easily escape, so I'm going to attack this pawn. Also, this pawn is a target, for example, if rook d7, which looks logical, unfortunately for him, I'm going to play rook c3 and rook b3. If rook d8, then I'm going to play king h7. Actually, this is what he needs to play, yes? Rook d7, then king g6, rook b7, king f6. Looks bad for white, maybe with some small chances to hold, but uh, should be lost. Actually, I see one uh, interesting idea for him, like the only, probably the only chance. Yes, but I'm not gonna say that, just in case. <laughs> 
Overall, Old Indian, uh, to that guy, the real champ, uh, Old Indian I like, uh, like, uh, there is no cons, only good things about uh, Old Indian, especially if you are... Rook d7 was the right move, uh, this one is... Ah, e5, this one, maybe not a bad idea. Hey, yeah, 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 maybe very smart, actually. Now what do I do, rook? Where do I put my rook to? E3? No, E3 I can't hold there. Anyway, I need my rook on B5 probably. But yeah, it looks like it's gonna be draw. Oh, am I? Oh, I just lost. I just missed E6. He could have played E6. E6, King, G6 maybe, yes? But actually I'm not playing for a win at all. Yeah, some uh, stupid things I did. Now I need just to go for Perpetual, I believe. Not not losing this. Because Rook, B5, E6 looks dangerous. King, G6. I don't know. Have no time. But I think it's not winning. Yes. But also not losing. Okay. Made mistake somewhere. Maybe allowing him to go to the... Um, to the... Uh, how can I challenge him once again? <laughs> hey. Okay, games analysis later. What I was playing, I was playing black, so let's play white. So Queen's Gambit um, accepted, this is what they call it. And Bishop B4 is like, actually uh, this move is uh, becoming popular nowadays, then like H6, then G5, something like that. Or well, not necessarily G5 right here, right now. Yeah, Bishop F5. Then I think somewhere should be queen b3 move, but I don't really know anything here. So let's just play. Let's imagine just I'm like a stupid, uh, like a stupid player. So just gonna play uh, like bishop d3, a stupid move. Um, and then just like, you know, uh, transposing uh, the play to the middle game. Since uh, you see, like once you... If you are trapped, okay, here it's of course not about being trapped, but it can easily, from the first game, if you remember, uh, I trapped the guy, I didn't even do anything, but I trapped him, and the point is that uh, he he wanted to play kind of um, critical way, challenging way, and uh, he he was trapped. So all, all Indian is good and uh, like Blitz, Rapid is very good. Maybe OTB, Classical Chess is more difficult, but I played that and still played that. And now you see he's surprised with bishop d3 like what this i have prepared it like 
uh, I have prepared queen b3, I have prepared knight f3, uh, I know what to do after bishop f6, but bishop d3, what's that? What's stupid? <laughs> and actually very simple, um, the point is very simple, just uh, to like to take the guy and to provide him to uh, like to invite him to go to the middle game uh, queen f3 maybe maybe but i think i i, I'm, I don't really think but i mean I know Caruana was playing this, somebody else was playing this, so in terms of evaluation, black should be okay. What I mean is that, uh, I mean that uh, there is no really like a way to punish black. So, and if you go to punish black, uh, and you don't know, by the way, now bishop h2, something to check, king h2, knight g4, I have king h3. Um, pam, pam, pam. Yeah, I want to believe that bishop h2 doesn't work. Maybe instead of b4, it was interesting to play f3, e4. Uh, but actually, maybe this is something I <coughs> I can do now. What if I play f3 and then e4? Usually, of course, uh, usually it's not a good idea to play here, to play there. Yes, to play like here and there and everywhere. Uh, but here... I don't really see disadvantages of playing f3 and trying to play e4. Just the question if I will be in time to do that. But even if I will, even if I have no time to do e4, to play e4, then I can always play bishop f2, just defending the pawn, and the game goes on. Uh, yes, f3 is f3 e4 is typical, but also a4 b5 still an option. Yes, so I could have played maybe rook b1, then a4. However, here usually black can meet it with b5. Just informing those of you who wanted to, uh, like maybe somebody of you wanted to buy my course and currently they are on sale, so don't miss. Like, I mean, not of course not on sale, but just on normal price. And so don't miss your chance if you uh, want to improve your chess. Uh, next game, I mean uh, game four, when I'm going to play with white, I'm going to play uh, one e4. So for those of you who are interested in playing, uh, like not in playing, but for those of you who play um, who play one e4. Mega, I mean, uh, they always, I, I believe when my course is on sale, they always uh, have uh, the same price as, as now, like the same price as, no, as now.
the course codes I can show you here it is so Queen C7 yeah Queen C7 is a critical move probably because um, like otherwise E4 By the way, maybe I can uh, maybe I can play e4 here. This is something uh, very complicated, but maybe that's possible because after e4, let's say bishop h2, king h1, nothing dangerous. The bishop can't really get back to d6 because of e5. Maybe black gonna sacrifice a piece. So the question is, do I need to like to be in a rush or I can just like maybe play h3? Of course you can buy it without video. Since I don't really see a good way, like maybe there is a way, but I don't see it at the moment. I mean, how can black stop e4? Maybe there is a way, uh, but... Uh, Maybe e4 was interesting instead of h3, but h3 just a safe option. Uh huh. So here is the way. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yes, quite, quite logical. Let's say. Yeah. So if I play e4, then knight f4, knight takes f4, bishop takes f4, and then, then actually I can take the pawn on d5. So e4 is still an option, e4 is still an option, rook c1 might be interesting. g4, knight g3, bishop g3, bishop g3, f4, bishop h4 nothing special about g4 uh, overall weakening my king can be very dangerous in the long run let's play e4 let's play like e4 or rook c1 rook c1 R rook c1 maybe just uh, like even knight b6 yeah just defending the pawn and getting ready to jump to c4 so i'm not sure if uh, it is good for me at all My pawn structure here is not so good. I mean, uh, if um, let's say knight f4, knight f4, bishop f4, and I take, I win a pawn on d5. So even if I win that pawn, my pawn structure is a bit uh, like uh, weakened. So, but pawn is a pawn, right? Uh huh. So he decided. Uh, Actually, I don't really understand what he did. Yeah, of course, pawn takes. I mean, the point is that now the f4 square is not... Ah, it's available. <laughs> Somehow I miss miscounted number of uh, defenders and attackers. Um, but still, still, I don't like... I mean, I like my position. Yeah, what if I just take... Anyway, taking is something I need to do, probably, right? 
And then what if I just play e5? By the way, first of all, you should check moves like rook takes f4, queen f4, bishop g3, but the queen easily escapes, so I don't trap the queen. Uh, bishop e7, bishop e7, rook e8, I don't get anything. Uh, by the way, maybe queen f3 is... No, queen f3 anyway, bishop g5, so... For me, it would be better, I think, just to play e5, looks quite, quite natural. Of course, uh, by playing e5, I should check captures like bishop e5, knight e5, because I have some uh, unprotected pieces, my king. But yeah, after bishop g5, I thought I'm just gonna take it. Uh, maybe I'm not obliged to take, but my plan was to take here and then play knight e4. Looks quite good, so... The only problem, maybe I underestimated f6. Oh, by the way, maybe f6, f6, it takes f6, gf6, and what if I play knight g5, pawn takes... Queen g6, king h8, queen h6, queen g5, but then I'm not sure I have a final shot. f6 uh, is the only move for him, I believe. Like, I mean, he can play queen d8, but it's uh, like anyway, at some point, let's say queen d8, queen e3, so forcing him to, or maybe queen d8, rook f5 is even better defending the e5 pawn, so no knight takes e5, and doubling my rooks on the f file. I'm sure the en the engine would give uh, like plus maybe two here, but what do I do to finish him? That's the question. Since unfortunately, let's say queen b3 or queen c4 check looks good but just let's say king h8 and i can just uh, jump my rook to h h4 then the question is what do i do maybe i can just play let's say rook f5 the point is that if pawn takes e5 then i give him check king h8 and then rook g5 and then it's already about rook h5 it looks good. As I already said, uh, like first thing to start with, of course, e takes f6. Uh, knight f6, then maybe knight g5 is at least uh, grabbing a pawn. Um, like, this is something, yes? But e takes f6, pawn takes... And what do I have there? Maybe just nothing. I mean, knight g5 something what I checked. Maybe knight g3 is interesting, uh, just uh, freeing this square, but there is rook f7. Maybe knight h5. And queen g6 is not so, uh, a critical position of the game. Yeah, critical position of the game, it's not so clear how do I beat him. I think two main moves for me are e takes f6 and the rook f5.
By the way, I just realized that maybe like at the moment, I mean, F takes E5 is not an option at all for black because I have knight G5, but how, I mean, for example, rook A E1 might be a good move. <laughs> it's funny, but uh, like later after the match, I'm going to check for games and maybe rook A E1 here is like quite, you know, you know, for those who studied my courses, Rook a1, last piece development, yeah? Just uh, like rook e1, what he gonna do, yeah? He has some problems. Um, it's like even there is a, a threat, a threat to play e6, knight b6, after let's say rook e1, the threat is e6, knight b6, e7, and if queen e7, then knight g5. Maybe rook e1 is not bad at all, I would say. However, like I would like to have something more, something more convincing. But what? Hmm. But I'm just curious, what's he gonna do after rook e1? 9 g5, rook f1, king f1. I don't know what he gonna play. <laughs> like, such a, like, uh, not, not the best move, but uh, I just, like, uh, like, I think two best moves are e takes f6 and rook f5. But rook a1, like, of course, the difference, what is important when you do uh, last move improvement, you do it first, you don't uh, spend, I don't know how much time I spent, like five minutes for sure, and you don't get uh, down to two minutes, yeah, this is the point. <laughs> but rook a1 is like such a classy move, yeah, it means like you really understand something in chess. <laughs> And you see, he he gets stuck because uh, I'm sure he's surprised about this move and this is not uh, what he even considered. I'm sure he was thinking about uh, like e takes f6, rook f5, uh, e6, maybe queen b3, queen c4 checks. Even uh, I also thought about some h4 ideas to open up the h file, but still uh, like didn't work. And uh, the point is that for black, it's not so easy to make uh, just the same story because I'm gonna make it... Uh... Actually, I just realized that uh, rook e1 is also kind of preparing e takes f6, g f6 and knight takes g5. So you see, this is like a really like, a, not a topic in my course, but something that I mentioned quite regularly. Uh, last piece development. So you see, you kind of uh, get lost in calculating these lines like e f six, g f six, then bam, 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 uh, then rook f five, la 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 la, queen b three, and so on. But just sometimes uh, such a simple move like rook e one. I I'm not saying that uh, this is the best move, but the move is quite uh, quite interesting and looks logical. At least it's not so clear what uh, black uh, should play here. And I'm ready to do something. I mean, e takes f6 is coming, e6 is coming. So e6, knight b6, then e7, queen e7, and knight g5. And for those who just like, haha, uh, 
uh, saying something about not not on Hikaru's level. Uh, but the question are you on what uh, you are on what what is your level because if I make a lot of errors you just don't understand anything and this is my point I believe that uh, like calculating like let's say three four moves ahead is like super and uh, like Uh, normal chatter, you're welcome, thank you. So, e6, knight b6, e7, then whatever he plays, it will be sacrificed knight g5 or knight f6. Queen e7, knight or oh, ho. Oh. <clears throat> King h8 is something interesting, but of course doesn't look like uh, uh, a solution to his problems. The only question, how do I finish him? E6 looks very interesting. Let's try. Not sure if it's winning, but uh, definitely very interesting. The point. I have queen e7, then knight g5, threatening checkmate and attacking the queen. Rook f7, then still knight g5. Yes, and this is a critical move. And I was not so sure what uh, I need to do here. <laughs> That's why I was not sure about this. <laughs> Honestly saying. I definitely need to sacrifice, but where? F6 or G5? That's the question. I'm threatening rook f7. I have perpetual check, queen h5, queen f7. Uh, if rook e7, then rook takes e7, queen e7, then rook f7. Rook f7, queen e1, check, king h2, rook g8, queen h5, checkmate. Whatever else he plays, uh, rook f7 is coming, even after queen g3. Yeah, he needs to sacrifice his queen. Oh, I blundered. Shit. But somehow I'm not surprised with my blunder. I blunder queen e3, queen d4. But this is very sad, blundering like this. Everything was in my hand, and now it's nothing there. At 
least maybe going for perpetual if that's possible but maybe he has queen d1 maybe i should have played rook f1 i wasn't sure where to move my rook It was, of course, completely winning. E7, knight f6. Ah, by the way, yes. By the way, I like. I I thought about that, but I forgot. A. So pre I told you that I'm going to try d5, something different, d5, e6, and a6, Yanovsky variation. Yeah, this is of course uh, very sad not uh, not winning games like this um, like uh, here of course uh, these games they just uh, let's call them what can we call them like not for fun but anyway i mean uh, like no prize is nothing so it's not so not so important, but anyway, um, it's sad. I don't know how to correctly pronounce it in English. In Russian, it would be just uh, Yanovsky. What is interesting for me to check about the previous game is uh, uh, Rook E1 move. How strong was that? I think I can't use. I think I actually I, maybe I can. It was already plus three. Rook A1 maybe the strongest move actually. Oh my god! Oh mwah, mwah. <laughs> what oh <laughs> like just rookie one was the best move maybe e takes f6 was also good no not so strong rook f5 also rookie one just just uh, a killer move e6 is the best yes and here this is actually what i th was thinking to play and yes i saw this line and then and then queen g6 yes had no, not enough time i had not enough time to um, to calculate So this is Carlsbad, um, Carlsbad position. Um, one thing I shouldn't allow him to do, like maybe a four at some point. But what do I do here? The knight, white's knight is well placed on e2 here, like it's usually on f3 and then it's okay for black. But the knight is well placed on uh, on e2. Maybe still I can try queen c7. g5 is too committal than bishop g3, and it's not clear for me where I'm gonna castle, what to do with my king. 
Now, if he gonna play f4, then I think g5. f takes g4, h takes g4, bishop g5, bishop g3 check. And something interesting. If he gonna castle, then maybe I also castle. Maybe still, yes, maybe still thinking of g5. Because anyway, you see, f4 always will be a problem. Always will be um, something annoying. Yeah, actually, it's better not to suggest uh, moves, even though the game is not even rated, so not a big deal, but just like, yeah. So, in fact, like both games I was winning, but both games ended in a draw. Game one, yes, game one outplaying him, game two outplaying him, just like talking too much, explaining too much, and... Uh, Okay, it's gonna be an interesting game. So, what are my options? I showed you bishop g3, but now I just realized that maybe the king can escape to d2. Maybe just rook g8 is interesting, just asking the bishop about his documents. What if I play rook g8? Of course, uh, I would prefer to play, let's say, if, uh, I, if the king was on c8 and the rook on d8, I would prefer to play rook g8, that rook, and keeping the rook on h8. Some tricks like knight g4, bishop g4. But okay, I should make it in a real situation. So now I have already some compensation because I got uh, the bishop pair. However, white is a pawn up, yeah? So he also has some, <laughs> some compensation. And you see, I wanted, yeah, I would like, I wish to have my rook from like other rook and having this rook on h8, so just taken on g4. But what do I do now? How do I like, I'm a pawn down. Castling lawn is an option, of course, but white can do the same and then his king will be safe there. But can I really do anything else? Bishop g3, then king d2, and he will go by a walk there. So, I don't like what's going on in this game. Um, and maybe c5. Maybe, uh, maybe like... Maybe like going for some activity in the center, opening up the position. Especially since I have the bishop pair and especially the dark squared bishop. However, if, for example, even after this, knight d4, Actually, I have check on g3, but maybe at some point I I will have to exchange my dark squared bishop for his knight. Uh, maybe to e7, maybe castling lawn. But I mean, my king is definitely not worse than his, so like not a big deal. I mean, not a big deal <laughs> waiting in the center. Uh, 
what is more important i just don't want his king to have a safe time on the queen side for example if i let's say if i castled then maybe queen d2 next move he castles and the king is safe there so i kind of start in, in advance with c5 then maybe c4 b5 this is one of the ideas another idea might be taken on d4 at some point bishop g3 check maybe even like bishop takes g no bishop takes g4 that's too optimistic but this is finally a game where I have a, a worse position. Okay, which capture? Since actually, um, okay, I, I plan to play bishop c5 and I'm gonna do that. Queen c5 was also an option, but I think I think bishop c4 is more like is better about controlling these squares, and it's already a threat of bishop takes e3. The queen can move to e5. I can even do it right now. I have I, actually I have no idea what he's gonna do about that knight d1. Just what I don't understand what is his idea. Knight d1. Knight d1 looks ugly, yeah. So at least stopping him from castling long. Unfortunately, yes, it's like once again, let's say knight d1. If my king was already on c8, then king b8, and I had a perfect position, then striking in the center with d4 and reaching his king but unfortunately if i play after knight d1 i cannot castle because of rook c1 and then i, I don't really understand what he's thinking about don't understand Why not knight d1? Knight d1 was not so bad. Like it still uh, wouldn't be so easy for me to like to activate my pieces. So after knight d1, maybe knight d1, the next move queen c3, uh, chasing my queen. Uh, but what this knight a4, I don't, I, I don't understand. This move I also not sure about. I thought about queen c3 for him. Um, but yes, now I have b5. This is interesting move. Maybe after b5 he can play knight c5. The position is very complicated, uh, like looks like the king, uh, I mean white's king is very very close, but how to, how to finish him, and unfortunately my king is not so safe, like maybe bishop g4, by the way, there is such an idea, a g4, knight g4, then being able to play like bishop f2, but looks like at the moment it's too... It's too early. So b5, knight c5. Unfortunately, after queen d6, pinning the knight, there is knight takes a6. And if queen takes a6, bishop b5. Oh, but there is rook a6. That's important. That's actually very important. So let's play b5.
So in calculation, you should always uh, like continue and look for options. So if B, like B5, if knight C5, then I play queen D6, attacking the knight. If knight D4, then I can jump to, like maybe I can even play rook C8. So the, the critical line, knight C5, queen D6, knight takes A6. So if queen b4, then knight b4. If queen a6, then bishop b5. However, I have rook takes a6. Oh, rook takes a6. Ah, queen b5, I have rook c6. <laughs> yeah. But kind of blunder. At the beginning, it was. It's still complicated, like maybe there is knight a6, rook a6, bishop b5 check, then king is 7 then maybe queen b3 attacking my bishop, but no, I think they're, like, they're, even if I lose my, like, if I lose exchange, it's still his king is in the center, my bishop on e3 is a monster, so he really needs uh, a good advice here what to do. Maybe, by the way, something like queen c3 attacking my knight here. So it looks like uh, such a format with uh, with the match is uh, more interesting for viewers, yeah? Like there is 115 viewers and it was like 140 at some point. Knight d4, okay. I thought about like maybe queen c3. <clears throat> Knight d4 is an option, of course, yeah. But what about, let's say, queen g3? Like, because I can even start with rook c8. By the way, you remember my favorite topic is uh, last piece development, since actually even here rook c8 is the last piece which, not, which is not developed yet. And actually, what I think, maybe rook c8 would really help me to finish his king, because after queen g3, his only road to escape is like this. But actually, I don't really understand what is his idea about rook c8 now, first of all. Uh, because I'm just attacking his knight. What he gonna do about that? I have no idea honestly saying. But let's check queen g3 first, since force and moves first. Queen g3, king d1. Even there I can go for bishop takes g4 maybe. h takes g4, queen takes g4, king c2 and then taking on d4. So even there it looks good. But I just really interested to see what's gonna be after After simple move for rook c8, what is gonna be? Maybe, can it be king e2? No, doesn't work. Let's, let's play just, I'm curious. I don't know what he gonna, what, what is on his mind. By the way, maybe it was also knight g4 almost about finishing him. Like a lot of, a lot of, um, oh, I thought about this move, but I thought that I can just play bishop e5. I mean bishop d4. Just a free piece. Because bishop d4, he cannot touch his knight on c5, he should play, <gasps> oh, la 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 la. 
Almost blundered. Almost. Ah, hey, da, 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 da. not so fast, my friend. Not so fast. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. And rook takes, not queen takes. Maybe I had uh, like I'm sure I'm I, I'm even sure that he's here I had like maybe maybe Queen G3 and finishing him immediately or something like Queen F4 by the way Queen F4 looks strong but okay a piece is a piece maybe just now Knight G4 trying to finish him like in a, in brutal way. But who knows? Maybe I will finish myself. <laughs> so, not, 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 not time. It's not yet time to to joke. Maybe just King D7 looks nice. King D7, Queen F6, still Bishop G4, and I want to play Knight E4 next. Okay, he resigns. And uh, as I promised you, I'm one uh, D4 player, but uh, just to have fun and make it more interesting, one E4. For those of you who plays who play uh, one E4, so it will be more interesting. However, I'm not gonna play any open C Sicilian with D4, just C3, like a cold shower, calm down, and H3. Yes, I'm that person. Oh, he made the move. Normal chatter, thank you. Unfortunately, I got almost nothing, like, I mean, in terms of money for that book. Yeah, but okay. So, White's plan is to play d4, creating a pawn center. That's still d4. Maybe, by the way, it was more practical. Maybe it was more practical to start with d4 here, yeah? So, not even allowing black to play e5. Because this position is actually not much for white. Black is solid. He's gonna play knight c6 d5. And there is not much white can do about that. And now it's also a question if I can play uh, if if I can play knight c3 because uh, you see the knight on d4 is unprotected. So let's say knight c3. Maybe knight d4, knight c6, knight c3, knight d8, knight d1, and it's already something very complicated. So um, let's let's just take it, or maybe bishop e3. Let's play bishop e3. Maybe also not the best move. Maybe knight c6 was better. Just knight c6, knight c3. But okay.
Rook e8 is nothing dangerous, just knight c3. I don't really know what he's thinking about, uh, because d5 is an obvious move to play. <laughs> yes, this is a problem. I hope I don't lose here after knight d5, bishop d4. I hope there are no tricks. <laughs> but there is such a chance. I thought about playing knight c3, but then knight e4, knight e4, d4, bishop e4, then bishop b2 in the end. Maybe just rook b1 and taking on c6, so maybe it's fine. But it, oh, thanks to him, oh, my friend. Knight queen f6, just a terrible move, what's that? So I was kind of worried about uh, all these th things, like bishop takes h3, maybe it works, I don't know, knight f4, uh, so something um, dynamic, because black has a bad pawn structure, what these pawns, but even okay, bishop d4, queen d4 is okay, but then play rook e8 or rook b8, attacking like here, some squares, but queen f6, what this, just exchanging queens? Uh, while having a worse pawn structure, maybe he will survive. There is such a chance, but uh, it's clear that uh, it is a typical position for two results. I used to be good in uh, these kind of positions, like maybe nowadays I'm not so good. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. For a second I thought what a stupid move I made. Next second I thought oh, actually it's okay. And then second later it was actually it's not. Uh, the point is that black can play c5. Knight c5, rook c8. Ah, actually he cannot, I have b4, I have b4. Knight c5, if rook c8, knight e6, then there is a rook c2 and black is fine. But there is b4. The point of this position is that uh, black should play... Um, uh, ...accurately, yeah? Because... Um, 
if I'm gonna make like if we're gonna make a few more moves then in the end if a7 c6 black's position is not so bad actually because uh, let's say my bishop on c2 is misplaced it would be better to have it on e2 rook on c1 yes yeah, so already pressing the c6 pawn uh, so here black has uh, enough activity at the moment but since the guy played queen f6 it's already like uh, and uh, he also played bishop d4 and i remember he played that fast not even thinking much Okay, maybe moves like knight f4, they didn't work. Like knight f4, for example, bishop g7, queen g5. Yeah, but maybe it worked. And this is something to think about. So he played bishop d5. Okay, let's play rook e1. I'm fine overall about exchanging pieces, exchanging rooks, uh, but I'm not in rush, so let's play f3 with the idea of king f2. Let's say b3, knight c5, this is my plan for next moves. Maybe, maybe by the way, I should have started with knight c5 not allowing him knight d7 yeah maybe f3 was yeah i think knight c5 was a better move just blocking the pawn immediately the knight on c5 is very well placed ah, okay okay Yes, of course, uh, Black, uh, Black will be uh, really happy uh, not to lose. And once again, he missing, he's missing a critical move. I'm not sure if that move worked, but I was kind of not sure. Rook e1, rook e1, and then maybe bishop a2, b3, and knight d5. The point is that if I play rook a1, there is knight b4 attacking my bishop and defending his bishop on a2. Rook a, b8 is nothing critical. I just play b3. Yeah, just b3. And unfortunately, he played that. Unfortunately, he played knight d7. So that's why instead of f3, I should have played, I should have played knight c5 straight away. But okay, okay, we, okay, we play. No rush, no rush. We play either rook a c1 or king f2 or even rook a d1 makes sense. Rook a d1 makes sense. Actually, he cannot really improve his situation at the moment yeah so it's still like by the way does he want to play c5 that's that's the question because if he wants maybe it makes perfect sense to play rook a d1 maybe he wants maybe so let's play rook a d1 So the problem for black is that uh, this is a passive position. <laughs> what? What? That? Uh, he is thinking I'm gonna take his knight? Of course not. Of course not. Now let's play king f2. Anyway, like, should be good. I don't really have to play a4 because uh, I'm in a4. I'm just gonna take and I have a passed pawn. So like I can only thank I can only thank him for playing a4. So it's nothing to worry about. And by the way, maybe the pawn on a5 is what is interesting, maybe the pawn on a5 is badly placed because now imagine like 
with pawn on a7, how can I create a passed pawn on the queen side? It's difficult. I need to, I need to like grab one of the pawns. While with pawn on a5, it's very simple. a4, b4, that's it. The pawn runs. While f5 also a bit suspicious, placing the pawn on the light square. Maybe yeah, maybe controlling the e4 square on the other hand. So okay, let's. Let's leave f5 like not a bad move. Uh, the question: What, what am I doing here? Yes. Maybe even like g4. No g4. Then f take g4 is a bit unpleasant. Because f take g4, there is rook f8. F4 myself. Uh, maybe it makes sense, like blocking his, uh, fixing his pawns. So even a uh, bishop endgame can be good for me. Let's play f4. Especially since e4 square is more or less okay. I mean, I can control it easily. So it shouldn't be a problem for me. While if you imagine my king on d4, it's just great. For example, there are no rooks. My king on d4, it's already, it's already like almost winning. Well, that's why let's play maybe g4 is by the way here maybe g4 is interesting but i don't want to do that at the moment i want to play g3 just moving away the pawn maybe even playing h4 later and uh, actually if i play rook e8 rook takes e8 rook e1 takes king e1 this position is almost winning king f6 king d2 king e7 king c3 king d6 king d4 and i am faster and then later the plan will be ah, actually king d6 always knight b7 knight a5 so you see the pawn on a7 would would have been uh, safer there while on a5 first of all it is a target and secondly it's easy for me to create a passed pawn and now it's even hard to make a move for black yeah Bishop f7 makes sense, yes, uh, freeing the d5 square for the knight because the knight on um, the knight on uh, where was it? the knight on b6? It's still there actually. <laughs> the knight on b6 is not doing anything. And what is good for the guy is that uh, if I play rook d6, rook d6 is a bit uh, dangerous because there is bishop d5 kind of arresting my rook there but knight d5 is coming maybe knight d7 uh, might be an option but knight d7 he can take on e1 first actually it's interesting if he takes on a1 first can i take on b8 or maybe ah with my knight on d7 i can move it to e5 so okay okay i have an idea I have an idea, but the only question I'm not sure about if this position without knights is winning because uh, this is also what I give in my courses that uh, if your opponent has uh, problems of pawn structure, double pawns, isolated pawns, weak pawns, then you need to like you need your knight to use them. And if I play knight d7, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, king takes. And then some activity by black, but looks looks interesting, looks good at the very least. At the very least, it looks good. So knight d7 is an option, rook d6 is an option. While not doing anything at all is not an option. <laughs> uh, rook takes e8, then just rook takes e8, not a big achievement. Yeah, rook e8, rook e8, rook d6, there is bishop d5, and I don't see a good way to evacuate my rook. Maybe, 
Maybe a simple move for uh, knight d3 is an option with the idea of moving the knight to e5. So for example, knight d3, knight d5, knight e5. And knight on e5 looks great. Yeah, it looks, it does, it does look great. So this is also an option. In uh, end games, it's always like you should be very careful. You should be very careful because, uh, like, especially in end games with uh, small advantage, you should be careful not uh, missing it, not missing everything. By the way, rook d4 is a nice idea at some point, just uh, rook lift. Uh, for example, rook e8, rook e8, rook d4, knight d5, rook k4. No, that's not so good. Okay, it's time to make a decision. It's time to make a decision. While I'm not really sure which move is the best one. And so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Ah, that's annoying, that's annoying because I need to make a move. It's also not clear if I play knight d3, should I take on e8 or not? Okay, let's try 97. I told you one thing that I like in general what I don't like about this move but you see chess is uh, chess is complicated uh, I mean this is one of the reasons why chess is complicated because somewhere you should follow general principles somewhere you should just ignore them so making it in a like concrete way I mean, obviously, the point, my point is that after knight d7, rook d7, I get um, an active rook. So the knight on b6, uh, anyway, it would move to d5, so it would be more or less active. But knight on b6, at the moment, it was uh, the defender of the d7 square. Seems like he wants to ah rook d1 bishop d ah bishop d5 is not possible the bishop is pinned. What am I talking about? So he I, I don't know his decision I don't like his decision because he thought he is gonna have control over the d file but he doesn't and now after rook d7 rook d7 uh, he should be really careful about both pawns and uh, I'm just gonna play rook a7 grabbing the. Grabbing the a5 pawn. 
maybe he has a way to create some difficulties there. I do, by the way, I don't see any point of him thinking right now since rook d7 is uh, the only move. Otherwise, I play like rook, like moving my rooks on the seventh rank and doubling on d7. Okay, he can play. He can play rook a8, let's say, but rook c7. Then he can chase my rook. Then still rook d7, and in the end, like what is his uh, what is his achievement? Not clear at all. So, like anyway, anyway, it will be more or less similar position. No, rook e8 wouldn't result in the similar way. Rook e8, rook takes d7, and at some point he has rook d2. But I mean, it's clear that the black should uh, trade one of my rooks like in this way or that, or that way he can't really allow me to have my both rooks on the seventh rank yes and king f6 that's obvious so now the problem if i play rook d6 then rook e6 and the question is if uh like rook takes e6 king e6 King e3, I don't believe, because I don't have a knight. Yeah, this is what I told you about. But if I play rook a7, then there, there is rook d8, king e3, and rook d5, defending the a5 pawn. But I can play bishop d3 there, improving my position. Yeah, so looks good. Maybe rook c7 was interesting. Maybe something else, I don't know. Like, don't have too much time to... Uh, Maybe it was the only way for me to... Um, by the way, maybe g4 was... No, g4, king e6 at some point, probably not really. But overall, like, g4 is an idea for me, of course. If he plays rook d5, then uh, bishop d3 looks up unpleasant. Yeah, rook e8, I thought about that. I need to play king d2. I thought about that. Now I need to play bishop d3, I guess. He can't use the pin at the moment. He can play bishop d5, then king c3. Maybe, by the way, this is the right way for him. Because anyway, he needs to activate uh, his pieces to create some activity on the king side. Rook d5, that's passive. That's passive. And the very funny thing, king c3 is quite unpleasant for him because bishop, I mean, <laughs> rook c5, bishop c4, the bishop... Uh, this is the end? Thank you for watching. <laughs> no, he should have played. He should have played bishop d5, king c3, and rook e8. And then rook e3, rook g3. While here the rook is trapped, king d4 is coming. I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so I will finally find the answer what uh, should I play after. Oh, probably I played it right. So, old Indian. And somebody was asking me a question about... Real Champ was asking me a question about old Indian. And uh, it's not an opening for beginners, of course. So, let's say I wouldn't recommend to play it under uh, 1500 online. But, like, higher than 1500 online, it's fine. Because the point is to bring your opponent... Uh, somewhere he doesn't understand uh, like what's going on at all he's not familiar with the with the country with the city and even with the like neighbor 
like he doesn't understand where where he is he doesn't understand uh nothing at all so knight f3 e4 and there is uh, a trap here <laughs> which i i didn't uh i didn't think that um my opponent will <laughs> trap in this uh will uh, fall in this trap knight d4 so queen a4 yeah queen a4 uh, bishop d7 is a possible option bishop d7 queen d1 knight f5 knight d4 knight d4 and bishop c but it doesn't look so great okay knight c6 is better queen b5 uh -huh. queen d7 is the best move i i did bishop d7 was also possible but i wasn't sure about this d5 well that's too complicated it's okay queen d7 was a solid move castle and lawn i wasn't sure rook this is okay and here of course bishop e7 was the move Yeah, unfortunately, it's not the same, yeah. <laughs> and here I should have played bishop e7, but knight e5, queen a5, yeah, rook a8. <laughs> so rook a8 is smart being able to play c6 after knight d5. Yeah, and somebody was asking about bishop d5. I thought about that move and probably, yes, it's, yeah, it makes sense. Is probably better than what I did. Okay, it is okay. Queen a3, queen a1. And uh, you see the funny thing that white is a pawn up, but actually, um, like, tell me which one, which one is an extra pawn. So rook d8 is okay. E5, g6. g6 is okay. a5 is good because all my pieces are well placed. This is what I teach in my first course. All your pieces are well placed. It's time to do something with your pawns. Yeah. A4. Rook. Uh -huh, I took. Okay. Rook A8. Bishop G4. Takes. Takes. Yes. And here I did everything. Uh, I did everything well. Except one moment here. Rook D5 was right. Rook C5. E4. Uh -huh. And I shouldn't, yes, not taken on f6. No, taken on f6 is okay. Ah, king f8. Actually, I thought about this move for a second, but I rejected that. Yeah, king f8, just winning. Yeah, a simple win, king f8. And I thought about this move, but somehow I thought that I'm not in time to escape. But actually, everything is fine. So, okay. And h6 is a terrible mistake and here at some <laughs> at some point i thought like maybe i already losing but after e6 i realized i have king g6 and it's even winning for for me so yeah it's just a drawish position i need to give checks i don't have any active play i can play king g6 because of rook g8 so okay it's more or less good game the second game actually like um the second game, like, it's a bit sad that I didn't win the game, but uh, I'm very happy with my brilliant move, rookie one. And black is, like, black should be careful what, uh, what he's gonna do about e4. I thought, by the way, about a5. Aha, uh -huh. so e4 was possible, e4 was possible here. You remember, guys, I told you that maybe e4 straight away, but um, yeah, h3. Here I thought maybe knight f4, but at, uh, no, I'm gonna take the d5 pawn anyway. And this position is already quite good, e5, bishop g5, everything just goes easily. So rook e1 took me five minutes. But I'm very happy with this move, and uh, even this move was enough to uh, to play. I mean, 
making this move uh, was a good reason to play this match because rookie one like it's a hard move for um, uh, even to think about that but actually like when you know the move it looks quite logical rookie one maybe here something like knight d6 yeah just like queen g6 next and finishing in this way but i thought it should be winning and actually it was and yeah the way to finish was this queen g6 now queen g7 and that's it queen f7 rook ah rook g6 even not necessarily rook h8 but rook h8 is also winning and maybe in the game i was already lost because i blundered yeah, uh, I should have played king h2. Yes, and uh, I thought that queen d1 was an option, controlling h5. Yes, and I lost. Ouch. But rook e1, rook e1. This is like, this is not for everybody, yes, not for everybody to enjoy <laughs> such a move. This is like, you know, in. Uh, in restaurants there is like uh, i don't really know how they call it in english but uh, uh, um, like uh, high kitchen or i don't know how they call it in um, in english but uh, rookie one is very nice move because it's hard to like there are so many attractive options like ef6 these checks, knight d6, uh, e takes f6, rook f5, maybe even something like h4. I think after h4, white is also better. Yeah, just plus two. It's a d decent move. <laughs> if gh5, maybe black will be checkmated at some point. Yes. In the end, as usual, left myself with not enough time. Yeah, this was a weird game where finally my opponent got a good position. Yeah, g5 I need to play, rook g8, and c5, yeah. yeah and dc5 was not really necessary, like maybe yes, just queen d2 after dc5, yeah. And what was that, queen d2, even without, like in 14 seconds? It was already a serious moment to think. And of course, knight d1, knight d1 was necessary. Rook h8 is very smart. Rook h8 is very smart. Hard move to find. This is even more difficult to find than rook a e1. Yeah, just rook h8 and knight g4, bishop g4 is probably unstoppable. Funny. With some advantage for black. Here, yes, here b5, knight c5, queen d6. Yeah, I thought about queen c3 at least like a last chance. D4, queen, oh, once again, this rook, this rook is so dangerous, yeah. <laughs> but this is, I wasn't sure what to play after queen c3, but I think it should be even like knight g4 should be okay. No, oh, knight g4 is a mistake. Which just taking on c5 should be better for black. Yes, it's better for black, but here it is just, yes, okay. And here, yes, here the game was bishop d4. And guys, just what I told you, yeah, knight f4, queen g5, but not, not bishop takes d4. And I, I literally told you this, yeah, I told you this, and yes, and at least some activity for black and uh, initiative for black, I mean. While in the game after bishop d4, queen f6, it, and queen f6 was also a bad move, exchanging queens. 
and white is just better maybe nothing special of course by the way yes it was possible to take the pawn on um on a2 it was possible to take it this is what i also told you guys yeah rook a1 and knight b4 yeah so and i i said that knight c5 was the right move now uh, here it's also possible to take so i should have played b3 probably so what about this Oh, knight d7 or rook e8. Yeah, knight d7 is a good move. Also took me too much time. By the way, maybe here I made something wrong. No? no, Bishop d5. Bishop d5 was necessary. I thought about king c3. Oh, king e3 is very smart. I thought about king c3, but then rook e8. And rook e3 is coming, but the point is to play king e3, and so if rook e8, then king f2, and then, just, <laughs> and then rook d8, bishop e2, such a, uh, like a lot of prophylaxis. And what if bishop e4, king e1 or king e3? King e3. <laughs> so you see, somehow, like, tick, 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 and no more activity for black. Interesting. Yeah, like how it happened, not clear, but it happened. <laughs> Very interesting. And so now if rook e8, then already rook takes a5. It depends, like it's possible to play for a win in both uh, cases. Uh, rook d5 oh before i didn't see before i thought just bishop d3 before is not so good rook b5 just bishop d3 simple slightly worse version than in the game since my king is not on c3 but still it's plus two a big advantage King d2, no, no. King d4 should play, rook c1, rook a5. And plus 2 should be should be winning for white. Yeah, last two games you made some some bad mistakes in the opening in the very early stage here uh, bishop d4 was bishop d4 plus queen f6 even though later it was still okay for black but uh, uh, why 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 not a knight f4 why not queen g5 for example so some activity why trade in queens especially since i'm more experienced and actually i am Okay, it's not like I am professional endgame player, but uh, I won, like, this is one of my um, specialization, let's say. Playing endgames. Not playing, but uh, outplaying <laughs> in endgames. games. 